microscope, one would see blue as hundreds of fine wax protuberances. These waxy pimples are on all fruits, but are structured to scatter the light more effectively on some more than others. The plum, peach, or fig, for instance, give off their white dew more freely than the apple or pear. It is at once a flower and fruit, in fact, not a fruit at all. It is an enclosed inflorescence, also known as a syconium. The tiny flowers of the fig are out of sight, clustered inside their purple-green casing. Involved and turned, the fig might blush with bloom, but it maintains its secret. That's how it should be, D.H. Lawrence says. The female should always be secret. Blushing, a faint blush. The mere intimation we are allowed to give of this secret. A secret we hold, but don't know. Vogue tells us, blusher is a must have in any makeup routine. Even if you're a bronzer gal, a complexion isn't complete without a hint of gel, cream, or powder formula to brighten it up and give it a youthful glow. Apply all your other makeup before starting. Then sweep a dusting of powder across the apples of your cheeks and up the cheekbones, like a genuine blush. Don't overdo it, though. Less is always more. Lawrence instructs, the proper way to eat a fig in society is to split it in four, holding it by the stump and open it so that it is a glittering, rosy, moist, honeyed, four-petaled flower. Then you throw away the skin, which is just like a four-sepal calyx, after you've eaten the blossom with your lips. washing line too. The peg clenched around its slender stalk so as not to interrupt the soft belly of the fruit. But the vulgar way, Lawrence says, is just to take it to your mouth, taking out the flesh in one bite. See the toothless bite of the peg. See the fruit burst with its square incision. The intent to hurt them these blushing orbs, these cliches. Like the wound, the exposure of her secret on the open day. Like a prostitute, the bursting thick making a show of her secret. The blood, with a life of its own, percolates over politeness, giving away the passion hitherto held secret. Blood vessels breathing out, widening their birth, pulsing rasps of prickly heat around the cheeks. Erythophobia, the fear of blushing itself, perpetuates the reddening further. Crawling across the body, clustering in blotches. Blush flooding into bruise, the capillaries beyond capacity leak into the soft tissue under the skin, causing discoloration. Phagocytes move in, mopping up the debris, breaking down the blood cells, deep-fried symphony of tapioca and barely their prawn. It holds no secrets to ooze. Its white, semi-translucent face remains resolutely unblushed. It cannot bruise, only breaks. <laughs> However, while the prawn cracker is not a vessel for a secret, it is somewhat of a mystery itself. Who even knows what those otherworldly dishes are? Indeed, the prawn cracker's seeming vacuousness is belied by the complexity of it coming into being. So, if you want to know, 
prawn crackers are made by mixing prawns, tapioca, flour, and water, usually with MSG and some E numbers. The mixture is rolled out, steamed, sliced, and sun-dried. Once dried, poker chips of this mix. You paint in hot oil, metamorphosing in seconds into the familiar cracker. Prawn crackers, then, have a bloom of their own from puck to product, just one that, like the apple or pear, doesn't catch the light. Woo!